Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Law Entrepreneur series with Bar and Bench, where we chronicle the journeys of lawyers who have left the mainstream legal profession to start their own business ventures. We have with us today Sapan Parikh, co founder and director at Legality, a document infrastructure platform built around document execution and workflows. Sapan is a 2016 graduate of NLSIU Bangalore. Prior to co-founding Legality in 2018, Sapan worked with Shardul Amarchand Mangaldas' Delhi office for two years with the competitions team. Thank you for coming on board, Sapan. It's great to speak to you. Thank you, Jalsina. Thanks for having me here. So, Sapan, uh, if I may start to ask you, uh, when did you first flirt with the idea of becoming an entre entrepreneur? Did you think of this uh, during your law school? Was this always the game plan, like the larger game plan? Or uh, when did the idea come about? So you're right, Jalsina. This uh, thought um, and some amount of effort started back during uh, law school. Uh, maybe third year, fourth year, uh, a bunch of us uh, saw what's happening around the world. This is the time when the Swiggy and the Ola in the country were really coming on stage. So everybody, not just us, everybody around was uh, really, really excited. And we were in Bangalore then, uh, which was uh, and still is the startup capital of the country. So we all were surrounded by sort of like-minded people and, and, and the feeling of uh, new age technology and new age disruption coming to the fore. Um, so a bunch of us got together, we would maybe at the end of every day uh, after classes would sit down and brainstorm a few ideas. We would definitely come up with a few really, really uh, crazy ideas. Uh, but some of the uh, discussions we did uh, also later on uh, in some other places we saw come to fruition. Right. So, so, uh, so that's where our journey started. Um, and uh, the the group which we used to form and discuss, each one of us, there were three of us, and each one of us uh, went on to do different things outside uh, the direct legal sphere. Uh, so definitely the journey started early, uh, back in the college, yes. Right. And like, what were your initial uh, challenges, like the challenges that you faced after leaving a tier one law firm to set up legality? Did your experience as a lawyer help when starting legality? Right. So uh, to be fair, um, uh, when I, I joined Legality as the third employee of the company and the co-founder uh, and head of the business. Uh, Legality existed before me. Uh, the the other founders, co-founders is Shivam Singla, who's Shivam is a batchmate of mine from university, uh, same batch NLSIU. And uh, Prakhar Agrawal uh, is the CTO and from the technical domain of things. Uh, so those two started the company back in 2016. Uh, they sort of built the uh, minimum viable product. Um, I was brought in as the co-founder head of business to sort of push uh, the sales side and the and the sales uh, engine of the company. Um, every stage of the company, uh, maybe not every day, uh, but every stage of the company, I would say in the beginning is very different. Uh, back when Shivam and Prakar would have started, the challenges they would have faced would be immensely different and difficult versus when I joined the company, my challenges uh, were different um, and I had to own up to those challenges. My challenges were in terms of sort of while it's not uh, the technology we brought wasn't sort of validated and well adopted across the country. We had to sort of push that boundaries in regulated and non-regulated space, demonstrate how the technology could sort of work well in the context of India how the technology could benefit the Indian ecosystem. And at the same time, people uh, would be willing to pay for that technology, right? So uh, my challenges were uh, very different when I came in. So depending on uh, what stage of the company you are at, uh, different sort of challenges come up to be solved differently. Yeah. So just coming to the specific challenges we faced um, uh, at that stage, as lawyers, one sort of thing, if you are sort of pitching to non-lawyers, uh, the challenge you, of course, have is the lack of the network, right? Uh, that's where maybe non-lawyers do get some benefit uh, because they are mostly pitching to people in their network uh, or maybe senior, more experienced people get the benefit of that network. So we didn't come with that network, right? We had the network of our uh, alumni. We had network of other lawyers, uh, but we were primarily not pitching to them because this solution is for, for uh, business side of things. It also solves for 
legal documentation it primarily solves for legal documentation but it's mostly used by the business team operations team uh, and also partly by legal team but the challenge was we didn't have that network going for us at that stage where people would already trust us to start with so we had to build that trust from day one from the perspective of being in a law firm like in your initial yeah. years uh, when yeah. when you were working with sam uh, there might have been like a set like you know what you need to be doing and then when you're coming out of the system where uh, you know your your work is defined to probably working in a startup and like finding out problems and like finding solutions right. to your problems what how did you deal with those challenges so absolutely in a law firm things are more or less the process is sort of set uh while i'm not saying there are answers all the time in a law firm but there are all tools available to you find those answers uh the complete structure of a law firm exists to sort of help you excel at your work uh in a startup especially in a very early stage startup you generally have no one to rely upon but yourself uh so you have to use all tools that are sort of freely available to you uh you have to look up things learn new things on the fly and maybe just compress what would have taken maybe 5 years to learn into 6 months uh, right because that's that's the business requirement and if you don't do it you would die uh, an early death uh, right. in terms of your business right so uh, definitely lack of a law firm structure uh, really really helps people excel at the work but when you're starting a business not necessarily a startup but any business you have to sort of build those uh, backbones of the company and that's of course is something uh you don't really get too much help on right correct and uh what was the thought process behind creating an organization that helps with document infrastructure i understand that you came much later into the organization yeah, but yeah. what was yeah. the idea behind uh, uh right. an organization right. that uh, right. that has this objective yeah sure so uh, both shivam and i as as i mentioned are sort of uh, lawyers so we obviously during our internship days uh in our interaction with our peers and uh, fellow lawyers we realized the amount of paperwork that is sort of uh, uh created processed managed by lawyers right lawyers are sort of infamous for creating a lot of paperwork uh, uh they are they are sort of uh, uh uh told that they are the source of a lot of uh, bottlenecks in organizations right so um the, a, that that sort of reputation doesn't really uh doesn't really sort of um, help uh, help the community right so the idea was if this is a problem creation of paperwork is a problem is there something that we can do uh, uh to sort of help uh, reduce the paperwork uh, that exists in in the legal sort of instruments right so we definitely came from that uh, of course when we started looking into it the paperwork which uh, is created in the legal context uh there is a lot of paperwork created in the non legal context also right when when executing businesses when you sort of interact with any other business while these are not uh, documents you engage lawyers for but uh, these definitely are legal contracts and they are also immensely uh, highly uh, voluminous compared to the documents just created by lawyers right so i'm just to give you an example let's say you go to take a loan the amount of paperwork that's created is immense right there's no lawyer on either side but you are taking a loan and you are signing contracts and uh there's a flow to that document right so Correct. there was so much problem to solve once we get into this sort of an ecosystem to solve the problem of indian paper uh there's so much to solve for uh given the variety of uh, context and uh sectors and use cases and people that interact with paper on a day to day basis right yeah got it interesting and um so how did uh, so you and shivam are probably um, batchmates from college but how yeah. did uh, three yeah. of you all come together like what was the connection like right so one thing which which is always sort of uh, said uh, when you are sort of looking for co-founders you should sort of first see whether you can gel well together because a lot of startups sort of fall out just because the co-founders or the top layer the management can't work together right, right. Uh, there are ego clashes uh, there are issues about trust uh, uh there are issues about commitment right so getting the right set of people who have the same level of trust comfort and commitment is is very key to starting uh your your journey as as an entrepreneur uh, because it's just easier if you have uh, more than one person doing it right 
so okay. uh, prakhar is is uh, was known to uh, shivam through uh, through a family friend um, so that really helped because uh, it meant that they could be at the same level in terms of commitment and trust uh, okay. and that's where we picked up uh, shivam and i of course knew each other back from the day and uh, shivam used to work from delhi and i used to work from delhi so i was okay. quite clued to what he was doing on a day to day basis uh, so when my thought uh, um, or my time came to sort of move on from uh, law firm the first thought was let me just see what shivam is up to right and this sort of market was picking okay. up in india with Got respect it. to digitizing so that became uh, my sort of default and first uh, choice got it got it because like you mentioned there's trust there's the there's the parameter of trust uh, you know having all of that in place and it's also a matter of having similar interests correct Right. right. And, absolutely, you're right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, what are the challenges that come um, before and after, you know, a round of funding? You all have been through three rounds of funding so far. Mm -hmm. So, what mm -hmm. what do the challenges look like before and after? So, before raising a round, of course, um, as I mentioned specifically to us, if I contextualize it in legality sense. Um, uh, we face some issues because uh, whenever you go for a round of funding the first thing they ask is like they they see how much gray hair do you have right because that's suddenly a metric for wisdom uh, so so that sort of uh, we didn't check that box um, of course we brought passion we brought context we brought commitment uh, to the table but uh, a lot of uh, people would not take uh, sort of young founders very seriously uh, that's the unfortunate truth um so that's one challenge right second right. challenge is uh, young founders don't have the benefit of the network uh, right. specifically uh, specifically if they are uh, from from the legal domain because most of the uh, funding comes from uh, people who are not from the legal domain right which means uh, you need to somehow connect with them uh, finding them is hard enough but once you find them them relating to the problem you're trying to solve is also equally challenging right so pre funding uh the challenge came that you have to show some amount of revenue okay before it's validated so that other sort of angel investors uh find that okay this is trustworthy this is repeatable this is scalable uh they will not fund you just because uh they know you from before which is what happens right. in a lot of uh other sort of alumni networks uh that 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 wouldn't happen for lawyers unfortunately um so so that's a challenge pre funding post funding okay. comes new set of challenges that how do you optimize for the for the money that you've been trusted with so okay. how to hire uh, how to fire how to retain how to manage while at the same time uh, keeping the lights on uh, planning okay. for future growth right okay. those sort of challenges come in um, at the same time ensuring that you don't spend too much outside of what uh, you can consume because now if you see the economy today there's massive layoffs happening uh because companies expanded too quickly without sort of a revenue model uh which could sustain that sort of a growth right so you also have to manage that uh so it's right. it's a lot of uh managing of things even post funding it's a different sort of challenges right right got it got it and how does streamlining document work help businesses scale and le leverage their growth you did scratch the surface of this question but like if you had to delve more into it yeah 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 so it, it, the the solution reality brings to the fore and solution if somebody adopts this it's as revolutionary as somebody going from a postcard system to an email system right back in the day when you had to communicate with people maybe back not when we were there we have always had the benefit of telephones and uh, cell phones uh, but go back 30 years and people were still doing telegrams and uh postcards uh where telephone access was in there uh right. moving that to emails as a instantaneous uh method of communication that's the big big sort of change you can see right similarly when you move from a physical paperwork to a digital paperwork uh the change is as stark because now a there is no cost of printing there is no cost of storage uh there is no indirect cost of maintaining your operations uh be it printers and scanners and storage houses warehouses and so on and so forth now this is just direct cost second is the indirect cost of having employees do this right, right? you will have to put field force 
uh, if I just take an example of uh, one of our clients who has who has massive lending operations in the country, which means they have ten thousand employees. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, these ten thousand employees, a large chunk of them are just managing paper or mm-hmm. moving paper from one place to another. Right. Okay. Uh, so much of employee time is just spent on just dealing with paper um, because it's on paper. They also have to ensure that things they are filling manually is also done correctly. Right. right? Which means mistakes happen. Which means they have to correct those mistakes. Which right. means some mistakes will not even be corrected. Which means it will come up for audit later. Right. So. Uh, that's the second sort of direct cost. And the third and the most important benefit once you digitize with legality is that the turnaround time for any sort of the document uh, becomes uh, close to like two to three minutes compared to maybe a week where you would wait for documents. Um, so that that's very key because that helps you remove the bottlenecks for your business growth. Right. Okay. So if you want to hire an employee, it can happen within minutes instead of waiting for days. If you want to... Okay a customer it can happen within minutes instead of days right so that's super super powerful and we've seen sort of return on investment on our sort of solutions is in thousands of percent uh, right which means you you invest uh, one rupee with legality you are probably making 100 rupees of savings uh, at the very least right got it that's great and what is legality's usp how does it stand out from its well-known competitors like docusign and adobe sign Right. So uh, the Indian context, given how large and complicated the Indian market is, Indian regulators are super active. Uh, that may not be the case across the globe, uh, which is where uh, a lot of these global solutions are focused on. Um, Indian regulators, be it RBI, be it CCA, be it Ministry of IT, be it IRDI, uh, these are very, very uh, active uh, uh, regulators and they, they know they know and at their heart, they have the customer's interest in mind, right? So right. frameworks have been created specifically in the Indian context, right? So when you right. adopt a solution like legality, you sort of ensure that you are within the regulatory framework in India, right? right? You are complying with all regulatory requirements in India, which exist today and which will keep changing uh, as as we, as as the markets grow and as the dynamics change. So that's just one aspect. Second as lawyers, we also understand there are some things which are just not written in law, but mm-hmm. are followed as a matter of legal practice, mm-hmm. right? Uh, so signing sort of every page on the document, um, ensuring there's sort of a, a rubber stamp on the document, right? Those are okay. very, very small, small things which uh, Indian practice uh, has, right? Which which is around which we've built our solution, right? So uh, we are also super mindful about Indian uh, practice where uh, lawyers, in-house or external I would really value a solution like this, right? Third, Indian context also requires mandatory payment of stamp duty. So right. we've also utilized the uh, payment of stamp duty, which really helps all businesses because otherwise managing stamp inventory in itself was a massive cost, uh, okay. both on the regulatory side and on the operational side, right? So uh, by building custom solutions for India is the way we differentiate. And being here, we are just more available to our customers uh, we just are able to sort of uh, listen to them, hear them out more closely and solve their problems better. Right. Got it. And how did you go about building trust with clients when legality was in its early stages? This is again something that you did touch upon, but if you had to elaborate, what would you say? Sure, sure. So uh, any sort of solution that comes to market, you need it to be validated, right? The unfortunate truth is anything which even you and I go and buy from the market, we always see Amazon reviews, right? We see how many people have liked it. We usually don't want to buy anything which has no reviews, right? So that's the same mentality businesses also adopt when they uh, look out for solutions, uh, which would mean that you fall into uh, a chicken and egg situation Mm -hmm. where uh, unless you have customers, you can't get more customers. And in order to get more customers, you need some customers. Right? Right. Uh, so in the beginning, we had to sort of uh, go bottoms up. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had to we had to sort of market ourselves to the new age startups that were coming up. So we okay. onboarded now very well known startups now who are very well known and established now. But back then they were also starting up, right? So right. What th- this may also be a suggestion for others to pick up. You mm-hmm. need to sort of get your solution validated first. 
so get uh, customers who are willing to take a bet on you grow with you you need to start from there which is how we started and then slowly uh, uh, slowly steadily or even rapidly you just scale up depending on where your customer segment is and we okay. sort of service them with mid market and enterprise segment in the country so we okay. also scaled up very rapidly to the extent that today we have 300 customers uh, maybe 100 plus banks in nbfc using legality mm-hmm. uh, top 3 out of 5 uh, uh, foreign banks in the country uh, use legality right so that's awesome. that's the level of sort of enterprise building we've done in the last 4 years right got it that's great and uh, if i had to conclude and ask uh, any advice you'd like to give law students and graduates who want to enter the world of entrepreneurship right so um it's 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 definitely very sort of a personal choice people have uh, and there may not be the the perfect time to do it uh, but what i have seen and what has worked well uh, is first you should practice law for a few years right you should give that a fair shot not only because you uh, you've trained as a lawyer that's that's not because you should give it a shot but because the skills practice of law can teach you the rigor the discipline um uh, that it can teach you uh, that will really help you later right right, uh, right. it will also help you think uh, differently it will help you come up with solutions it will help you understand the legal nuances which will help you build businesses later right so right. even if you see mr aditya ghosh's example who was earlier at jsa then moved to indigo uh, then oyo then now is the founder ceo of akasa Uh, okay. his journey similar and he was sort of a very big sort of inspiration for all of us uh, who were shifting from law at that stage okay. so i would suggest people spend a few years uh, honing their skills as lawyers gain that context gain a bit of network in the industry and credence in the industry and then they uh, sort of uh, think about how can they solve a different challenge uh, so so that's just uh, right. my sense uh okay. second even when you are switching you should think about what problem you are trying to solve you should not try solving um a problem which does not exist so definitely get your problem statement validated by talking to more and more people uh mm-hmm. but you should actually try solving for a big problem which people can pay for mm-hmm. uh of course uh, there are some gut feelings and you will take that bet uh but you should solve a real problem uh, right uh, right so those are just sort of two uh, things i would say and okay. uh, one should also something which probably does not get said enough one should mm-hmm. also sort of see if they are financially and emotionally ready for a, a journey as an entrepreneur because mm-hmm. uh, it comes with a lot of financial stress it will come with a lot of emotional stress so you need to ensure that you have your family backing you up you have your partner backing you up and you give yourself at least two years to sort of give that a bet right because within six months nothing will happen you need got to give it. yourself at least two years of runway to be able to take that bet right got it that's that's very insightful and if i had to just um, ask um, what are some of the transferable skills as a lawyer that has you know helped you in your uh, business like as an entrepreneur right so one thing definitely is communication mm-hmm. um, and of course uh, of course uh, not it's not to say that people outside of the legal domain do not have communication skills which are as good as lawyers uh, a lot of them are equally as good if not better but mm-hmm. lawyers definitely their bread and butter is communication written and oral right so you right. should definitely hone that skill and you should use that to to your advantage when you move forward um that's one second as lawyers you're also supposed to be very good at research right mm-hmm. you're very right. you're supposed to be uh, you're supposed to be able to get into details without getting right. lost right? right so that's a second skill that can be very helpful and third skill would be uh, lawyers never shy from hard work uh, no. they have done a lot of hard work uh, at university or post university at work so uh, so so nothing looks too challenging to them Right. when they just move into entrepreneurship and they have to put in those hours or they have to spend their weekends uh, sort of building the core of their uh, business in the beginning so right. i think those sort of things really help and uh, and and uh, it's definitely a transferable skill right got it 
All right, Sapan. Thank you so much for joining us for the Entrepreneur Series. It was a pleasure speaking to you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon.